This all spiraled from when my youngest dropped her snow globe. It smashed on the floor, and now I have to use my hobby skills to repair it. But that got me wondering, what would Inquisitor Erasmus want for Christmas? The answer is, a festive Warhammer snow globe. Obviously. This build with a mix of 3D printing, painting, and shopping. The globes themselves were from AliExpress and cost six quid. The files are a mixture of free files and purchase files from my mini factory, which are linked below. The forest animals are from Oliver Spaeth's Patreon, and of course the most expensive element is the Inquisitor himself, which is a GW model that costs 35 quid. Because of course it does. I wanted to know how big to make my base, so I drew around the bottom, which was a complete waste of time. I should have just measured it like a normal person. Initially I wasn't sure how I was going to tackle the base, but like any good millennial, I decided to google it. And I think I searched for gothic snow globe base, and I came up with this amazing vial from my mini factory. It's actually a dice tower, but I only decided to use the third level. The software I'm using is Lychee, and it's times like this I love my 3D printer. I also printed out some more details, but you'll have to wait to see what they were. Ah, fine. I've already told you about these bits anyway. These are scaled down Christmas ornaments. For some reason their faces are printed separately, which makes them unbelievably fiddly. They look cool though. I mixed up some putty to act as a seat for the globe, then I raided my craft drawer for something to stick behind the windows. Pro tip, use PVA glue, super glue doesn't work. I primed it all grey, then stuck all the components on and we're ready for painting. A quick note about the little details here. The cherubs that surround the top, they weren't planned, but I'm so glad I put them in. Lesson learned, always go the extra mile. The paint job's really simple, it's all washes and sponges. Plague bearer fresh and skeleton horde contrast paints, I basically went for browns at the bottom and greens everywhere else. And then over the top of that, I used Vallejo model colour camo greys just to stipple on some texture until I got an effect that I thought I was happy with. I find you get a more effective look if you apply the highlighted stippling to the top exposed areas that will be open to the weather and leave the darker, danker things to the recesses. If you want to chat about any of the stuff you see on my channel, then the best place to do that is over on my free Discord server, link down below, where you'll also find links to all my social channels, plus exclusive discounts for any viewers of this channel. But as you are here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps keep the AI satisfied and serving out my video to those who want to find it. Thanks, guys. This is the plug from the snow globe. The Warhammer base gets stuck right on top, then I go a bit Scarface and stick it down properly with some baking powder. More super glue, and cover the whole thing in sand. Then we get into priming. Bugger. We're going to go full slap job on this one, so on goes the white sand level. If you haven't seen this stuff before, it's glass bead gel. It makes excellent tarmac, but also makes a glittery, snowy surface. Then we're going to stick our woodland critters in place. A fox, a bunny, and an owl. Because what's an inquisitor seen without a bit of whimsy? That owl is quite fiddly though. This last step was a masterstroke, if I don't say so myself. I took some Vallejo plastic putty and used it to create a fur trim to all the cloaks. Inquisitor Erasmus has gone full Santa Claus. The colour choices were really simple for this one. I debated whether to go the whole grimdark route, but I decided that Santa's pretty grimdark on his own anyway, especially in this cloak. So we left it full Christmas mode. For the skin I just used a tree out of Shadow Flesh, Tanned Flesh and Olive Flesh by Pro Acryl, and the rest of the skin was basically red and white, although I guess foxes are orange. I don't like to waste paint, so I used the orange that was left on the brush to base out anything that was going to be brown later. Skulls, parchment, books, leather, that sort of thing. I had some Olive Flesh left on the palette, so I decided to use that for the parchment, and my fox's whiskers. To finish my foxy friend off, I highlighted in contrast Magmadroth Flame, which completely obliterated everything beneath it. <sighs> Never mind, it still looks cool. It's a toss up to which is my favourite red contrast paint, Flesh Terrace Red or Baal Red, so I decided to use both. One quick coat of Flesh Terrors over all the red cloak and armour, then Baal Red to the top surfaces to highlight.
keeping it super simple we've got Procrol Bronze for all the metal trim. Titanium White for all the fur edges to the cloaks. And Skillet and Horde to age down all our parchment and skulls. Nice, we're all finished. To keep that paint job safe inside the snow globe, you get three coats of matte varnish. Oh wait, we're not finished. I've still got some surprise extras to paint. Christmas elves, green jumpers, white trim, and little red hats. Pop him onto his balcony. Look how happy he looks. Excellent. I've been waiting for this bit. Time to put in some glitter into that snow globe. That should be about right. Ah, uh, maybe not. A bit more. Yeah. Uh, just one more time. Here's a bit of insight into the making of this video. I spent hours researching what sort of liquid to fill my snow globe up with. Should I use water? Thin down glue? Baby oil? As a result, my YouTube homepage is completely wrecked and I might have to put an NSFW filter on the whole thing. Baby oil should not be searched for. The things we do for art. Either way, I decided I was just overthinking it and went with water. It worked fine. I absolutely brim that snow globe to avoid any air bubbles being in there when I put my thing back together. Gave the model a quick rinse and then I put him inside. Bye bye little guy. I've actually oiled that rubber seal to make it easier to get into and then I really carefully, tentatively pushed that inside the neck. I really didn't want it to go wrong at this last second. I am unreasonably excited at this point, so a few last minute checks and then we're good to put it inside the base. This thing looks so cool, I'm really proud of it. So without further ado, let's get to the glamour shots. This project has been so fun, but thanks in particular go to those on my Discord server and my patrons. Frederick Johannesson, Krusty Cloud, Joe Dillingham, Black and White Dog, Jerry Ryle, and TJ Quintus. Cheers guys, you're legends. By now a little box will have popped up serving up a new video, so by all means check that out. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.